So today the illustrated music is going to be about automatic music, 1997, uh, 18 movements for six percussionists. Uh, I, since I'm the editor, uh, publisher of my music, I could publish things however I want, and I decided to put it into this box, which has about 500 pages of all the material for the six percussionists and the scores and everything here. Um, I was surprised when I was preparing this. I went through the archives from 1997. Uh, I worked, I think, over a year on this piece. I was surprised to find how much material there was. Two whole notebooks just full of automatics sequences that I was devising and looking at. And lots of pages of computer output and, and pencil sketches and everything else. And um, all this research reminded me of a conversation that I had uh, already when I was 20, 21 years old, senior year at Yale. I lived down the hall from another guy who wasn't a musician, but he was interested in music. And he was always asking me about the little pieces I was trying to compose, about what my teacher that year, Elliot Carter, was saying about the surreal music we were supposed to be studying and everything. But one day, he said, you know, <clears throat> Tom, you have a fine mind, but it's a theoretical mind. You should be doing music theory, not trying to be a composer. I said, well, you're right. I love music theory. I love research. But I want to hear this stuff, not just talk about it. And this anecdote comes back to mind because I think that sort of symbolizes the direction I and my music have taken in the 50 years since that moment. Uh, and I hope that you can see uh, in the four movements that we're going to talk about today how uh, it's research and it's music theory, but it's also music and it's something we can hear. My first uh, meeting with Jean-Paul Lelouch was about Automata. We had lunch together and that one lunch he really got me started on automatic sequences. And it was the idea was pretty simple, they're really morphisms, if you want to be technical. I decided to work just with one, two, three. One meant doom, two meant talk, and three meant silence. There are a lot of percussion instruments like bongos and tabla and agogo that just have two notes. And that's a very interesting way to write percussion music. So I could write something like one, two, three, one, two, three, two. And that, that would mean doom, tak, doom, tak, tak. Uh, or one, three, two, three, one, that meant doom, tak, doom. So forth. Um, fortunately, about this time, I happened to have a friend, Peter Adviance, in uh, The Hague, who uh, was a artistic director for Schlagwerk Den Haag, which is probably, year after year, the best percussion group in Europe. And he agreed to um, present these pieces with uh, his ensemble. And he made a wonderful recording. We're going to hear uh, excerpts of their recording uh, today. We're going to hear four different movements called uh, Symmetry, Canon, one line and loops, uh, four very different loops among the 18 movements that complete this, which I don't have drawings for. Maybe some other music theorists will talk about the other 14 movements at some point, but we're going to hear these four. Um, so let's go to the drawing and I'll explain how the automat works. As you see at the bottom, the rule is simple. One transforms to one, two, one. Two transforms to two, two. And you begin with one. So at the bottom of the drawing, you have one, which transforms to one, two, one. Now the one transforms to one, two, one. The two transforms to two, two. And the one transforms to one, two, one. So now we have doom, tap, doom, tap, tap, doom, tap, doom. There's no threes in this system, just dooms and tocks. Now all of that goes to begin the next transformation. There's a tock, 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 tock in the middle. And then the previous transformation is repeated again. Everything is symmetrical. 
uh, from left to right. The first player began, the second player played the tock tock, the third player enters with the tock 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 tock, and then we get the fourth player gets to come in with his eight tocks, and then the fifth player, and finally the sixth player with the uh, who had to wait a long time until finally he could come in and play his 32 tucks. Something amusing about that. I don't know. The mathematics is not trying to amuse us. But you have to wait so long to hear this. Finally, this new sound comes in with 32 tucks. Well, if that amuses you, that's fine too. But uh, it's not the mathematics that's doing it. This is the part of the, uh, this is why I wanted to hear these things. Because when it becomes music and you have human reactions, it's a little bit different than just the dry numbers. Um, this uh, sixth player, that's not only he had to wait a long time to, to play, but he can't play again because the form is symmetrical too. So after he's finished, we go back to the, to the previous line with the 16 talks in the middle and then back to the beginning, finally back to the, to the beginning. Let's listen to this and uh, try to follow the mathematical logic, but if it amuses you, that's fine too. This is the drawing for another movement, Canon, which begins with the one in the center, which transforms according to the rules that you can read at the bottom to one, one, two. That makes a triangle around the one. And now the first one transforms to one, one, two. The second one transforms to another one, one, two. The two transforms to three, two, according to the rules. Now the third player is playing the one. The second player has advanced to the one, one, two. 
And it's the first player who has advanced to 112, 112-3-2. So you see, it really is a canon. Everybody's going to follow the progression from the one note to the three notes, to the eight notes, to however many are the next level, the next level, the next level. But they're going to all play in unison because there's a delay. When the third player enters with one, the second player is playing one, one, two, and the third player is doing his thing, one, one, two, one, one, two, three, two. Uh, they're all playing in unison every time they play. When all six players have started, uh, you get uh, one person who plays only one note, one piece and plays three notes, the next person plays uh, the eight notes, and so forth. And only the first player, which I think is an agogo, it's a metallic instrument, is playing the uh, complete uh, cycle. The interesting thing here is if you look at the bottom of the drawing, you can see that the uh, there are not very many threes until you start to get outside of the, away from the center, and uh, then you get to a group of, at the bottom, two, three, 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 two, and the next line is two, three, 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 two, and at the last level is two, three, 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 two. A long boss. It's kind of a frustrating waiting for that last note to come, and we get impatient. But of course, it's not the intention of the mathematics to make us impatient or frustrated. It's just that's the way it goes, and those are the human reactions we have. Um, so again, uh, try to follow the mathematical logic, but if you find uh, you're impatient waiting for the ending, that's part of the music.
this movement is called one line uh, because it's an automat that became one single line. I decided later on who would play what. There's the automat. Begin, two, three, one. And talk, doom. Uh, now the talk, the two becomes three, one. And the uh, three becomes one. And the one becomes two. So we have, now we have doom, doom, talk. And the next transformation is doom, talk, talk, doom, so forth. I decided that each player was going to have his own motif. So the talk, doom at the beginning is going to be for player six. Doom, doom, talk is player one. Doom, talk, talk, doom is player four, and so forth. And every player has his own motif. But when we got to transformation seven, you see it's marked tutti. And I really liked this rhythm. Tuck, doom, 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 tuck, doom, doom, tuck, doom, tuck, tuck, doom. Something very nice about that, very jovial, happy, happy music. And I've been thinking about it. I think the reason that I like it is because it's, it's um, in 4-4 four, four time, kind of jazzy. One, two, one, two, three, four, tuck, doom, 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 tuck, doom, doom, tuck, doom, tuck, tuck, doom. And I'm not the only one that likes that. I hear, I notice when the percussionists play this piece, they're all very happy to have their individual motifs that nobody else can play. But um, they're particularly happy when they see the tutti coming back. They can all come together and play tuck, doom, 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 tuck, doom, doom, tuck, doom, tuck, tuck, doom. Now, I want to show you the big drawing, the real drawing of how this evolves. Here you see how the two, three, one, about the three one one two, but the two three one you'll notice there's a connection. It comes back uh, in the third transformation. The three one one two comes back in the fourth transformation, and so forth. Now, when we finally get this seventh transformation, that's the rhythm that I like. That I decided everybody has to play together, and I put in a box, and the box is going to come back two transformations later and two more transformations later. But um, there's another time it's coming back there in uh, a curious way. So now we're going to hear Schlagwerk Den Haag play one line and uh, try to follow how the rhythms are coming back and uh, especially how the, uh, the tutti rhythm comes back. You don't quite know when it's going to come back, but you know it's going to come back. And in fact, sometimes you hear it twice in a row. So now we're going to hear this. Try to follow the logic of uh, the way things are coming back every two transformations. And uh, listen especially for the happy music which comes. Uh, remember that it's not the numbers that are trying to make you happy. That's just what happened when a composer started listening to this and uh, choosing the instruments and trying to be sensitive musically to what's going on. Uh, so if you uh, like the happy moments too, that's fine. That's all part of what's going on. Let's listen. One, two, one, two, three, four.
So now we're looking at a page of output that I found in the 1997 sketches. The formula, the rules are written above. 1 goes to 2, 2 transforms to 3 to 1, 3 transforms to 1, we begin with 2. So you see, we get 2, that became 3 to 1, and that became, 3 became 1, 2 became 3 to 1, and 1 became 2. Now there's an additional rule that says 1, 2 gets dropped out. So now the 1, 2 at the end got dropped out. And uh, 1 became 2, 3 became 1, and 2 became 3, 2, 1. The 1, 2 was dropped out. Things go on, and curiously, this is called loops because things gradually start to form loops. You see the first example that I, is in, let's see, if you look down at uh, level 7, for example, you see clearly 2, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3. That's the red loop. And then if you go back down to level 10, you see it again, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3. 2, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3. A little later, it comes back, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3. 2, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3. 2, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3. Um, but then there's also a brown loop that starts to repeat. Tak dum, tak dum, tak dum, tak dum. Tuck -dum, tuck -dum. And then there's the pencil loop that just says tuck -dum -dum, tuck -dum -dum, tuck -dum -dum. And each of these loops gets to be uh, more and more loops. And they last longer and longer. It's very strange for an automaton to do this. Um, but that's what happened. So this is the drawing of the complete uh, sequence of uh, loops, automatic music. It begins in the middle. You can see the brown ink there because um, this is not loops yet. But the loops are soon to come. You see that brown ink becomes black ink with tak dum tak dum tak dum tak dum tak dum tak dum and that leads to the loop on the top tak dum dum tak dum dum tak dum dum which leads to the uh, loop at the lower right Tuck doom, tuck, tuck doom, tuck doom, tuck, tuck doom, tuck doom, and that repeats for a while. And then we go uh, back to the first loop. Tuck doom, tuck doom, tuck doom, tuck doom. And um, this continues. But look, there's some other brown ink going scattered in between. That's like uh, logical accidents, I guess. Automatic accidents. They. Uh, because it looks to me like the automat really wants to just be doing repeated loops. But there are little accidents in the logic that make things that don't fall into the loops. That's very hard to understand. Even Jean-Paul Lelouch uh, didn't understand that very well, but we'll hear his opinion in a minute after this is over. Let's listen to the loops.
I want to try to summarize a little bit uh, what these four movements were doing. The first one was um, completely symmetrical and predictable. Cannon was a little bit less symmetrical and predictable. One line was more or less, uh, uh, had a logic that you could follow, but you never knew quite when that duty was going to come back. And the loops was completely crazy, no reason why a simple automat should fall into three loops like that. And uh, I decided to ask Jean-Paul Lelouch, uh, can you explain why there's so much difference and why some uh, automata, some morphisms, will produce more predictable and less predictable uh, sequences? And he explained, you know, there are several theories that mathematicians have had, theorems that explain degrees of predictability and order, and they're very useful theories. But very often, what they predict is not at all what humans perceive as predictability. You see, there are a lot of things that mathematics cannot explain, fortunately.